I think it's time to get back onto the Victorian project and I'm going to make this. Hello, it's Icy. Yes, that's right, it's time to kick off the next part of the Victorian project. And yes, I want to make something vaguely similar to this corset. Now, is this corset from the correct era for the outfit I'm making that's roughly 1890s? No, it's not. This corset is from the 1860s. However, I do want to make this one, or something vaguely like this one, in particular because I think will actually work better with my body shape than a curvier uh, Victorian style uh, because this in essence is well the, the section under the bus scores is actually closer to maybe an Elizabethan style corset which I know from experience works for me uh, this is and you'll see this in a previous video my Elizabethan <laughs> style corset that I made many years ago and have recently recut uh, so it actually fits, is comfortable and looks great. So in essence what I want to do is take this sort of section under the bust, add, make it so it actually fits so it sits on my rib cage because of course right now because of the way it's shaped it's not actually snug across the rib cage because there'd be no room for the top half um add gauze and add basically hip flares or hip gauze as well across take it down further at the back so it sits sort of where it needs to to support a corset uh, to support petticoats and a skirt and uh then see how we go so the particular corset that I just showed you, there are more detailed photos at the Victorian Albert website, which I will link in the description, uh, and you can check those out as well in case you want to see more details. So I'm going to kind of take that, I'm going to take this, uh, and see if between the two ideas I can't come up with a corset pattern that fits me and that fits my body. Now, for bits and pieces that I'm going to use for the mock-up, because this video will be all about first, first muslin and maybe, depending on how long it takes, <laughs> first sort of wearable mock-up, hopefully. So I have a big hunk of calico. Uh, it's relatively heavy, but like it's not like it's super, super strong. I have this great purple uh, heavy duty duck canvas. Um, it does have a have a teeny bit of stretch to it. Um, so this is the plan for the wearable mock-up because purple's cool. I actually bought this for a furnishing project, which I didn't need it for in the end. So I've got like a meter of this um, so that should be enough to do a wearable mock-up if I need to I'll um, if I don't think this is stiff enough I can sure probably layer this with something else to like add an additional layer of stiffness uh, I have a whole bunch of black twill tape uh, for boning channels and I do plan to use that for the final corset as well if if it works on the mock-up uh, I will use twill tape boning channels for the final one as well. Um, I've got, for the final one, I already have the uh, cotille um, from the last time I tried to make a corset, which was probably like, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. Um, so I'm not 100% without experience. I've got this one and I've got a more traditional kind of one, which ultimately worked but didn't actually flatter me so it never quite got finished so hopefully this one well i mean it will be finished hopefully it'll be flattering uh now the other thing i've got is the busk now this is the busk that i pulled out from the previous commercial corset that i cut apart 
to get all the bits out and you can see that video here as well uh these these are not long enough i didn't think about that basically so it's it's just a little bit short compared to because i still want the the victorian the course that i'm going to make to come up to just above the apex i realize that's slightly higher than it should be but i kind of want to wear this for more kind of like non uh non-historic kind of things as well so i do want to take it to a spot where it's usable for other things but if i do this you can see it's a good like i think i think the bottom of this corset does need to be a little bit longer and then that leaves about five centimeters too short so um so probably what i'll end up doing is i'll use this for the mock-up um and i'll use some steel uh some flat steels to like increase the length so to speak i think that will be okay it'll be all right for the mock-up and then we'll see how we go and if that all works and i'm happy with that uh and i decide i'm keeping the mock-up then what i'll do is actually uh i'll go and buy another busk pretty much uh that's the right length so you can get them in australia i didn't necessarily want to buy one but you know we'll we'll see how we go now the other thing i want to do is i've got uh, st flat steel from the previous time I tried corset making still uh, so I'll have like additional layers of flat steel at the front I think is the plan and then on the back I'll have them either side of uh, the eyelets uh, so there'll be four flat steels at the back and then the rest I want to have just cable ties actually uh, I'd like this to be lighter I do have spiral steels both the ones that I took out of the previous corset and I've still got some spiral steel uh, from the original thing it does make a very heavy corset if you're steel boning the whole thing so I think I would like to get away with mostly mostly plastic stuff because of the shape of my ribs and waist and or lack thereof <laughs> um, I can't really get a lot of uh, waist sort of reduction anyway pretty much my the bottom of my ribs is here and the top of my hips uh hips top of my hips is here so there's there's like there's nowhere there's nowhere to reduce uh the only way i would get waist reduction is if i actually kind of had a cupped corset and then that's definitely not the right shape either so basically what i'm going to do is yeah have something fairly tubular little bit of sloping in sort of from here to here and then try and pop the hips out i might overly pop the hips and try padding underneath i haven't decided whether that's worth worth doing um and then yeah add bus scores um to create something similar to the other shape so uh there's a lot to do and a lot to try and a lot to see if i can manage to do the whole thing the first step is really to take some measurements uh, so the plan will be to measure sort of oh the other thing as you can see this this one basically does up straight down the back as well so I need to take out like probably six to ten centimeters out of the back as well um, which will help in the <laughs> material requirements I'll need much less material then um, as well so that's another thing that I, I need to do too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on this corset in chalk where the underbust line is all the way around. Actually, should we do it now? Let's not even do it in chalk. I had this idea last night. I thought this would be a good idea. This is masking tape. So it's really, I, I pretty much, I think I need to work out the difference between the underbust on the corset and the underbust on me. Um, that should, and then that should be, that should be about right. So, shedding masking tape, that's the first part. So, about to embark on another giant project. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so the second part of this is the 
taping again uh, on me directly as opposed to on the corset. So what I'm going to do Oh, okay. So, uh, I would say, please don't use cheap masking tape. <laughs> maybe you want blue painter's tape. Uh, maybe you want packing tape. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, masking tape is not <laughs> cutting it. Uh, okay. Have a look. Okay, I think I think that's all right. So now let's see if this works. Oh. I think I'm gonna need help when I get to the back actually to get this off. So I will come back. Okay. So I have a cage. Well, no, this way. <laughs> I have a cage. Uh, is this helpful? I sure hope so. Um, so I, this, the bottom, the bottom line here. That's the additional kind of round the hip. So I mean, there's there's shaping going on. So what I plan to do is huh, draw on the corset onto a piece of paper like the existing elizabethan one i'm going to lay this on top and then make some changes and edit some stuff and draw some things and then see how that goes uh and then try between the two try and get me a pattern will it work i don't know we're about to find out Alrighty, so I've done a bit of mock-ups. Uh, okay, this is the initial mock-up uh, using the busk from the old corset. I've just tucked this down here because I forgot to add the gauze <laughs> for the bust. Uh, however, that does tell me, so there's there's a little bit of, uh, so, uh, so I've got a busk here and the, uh, I've got four steel bones at the back. So the lacing is cut off the old corset because I figured that would work for a lacing strip. And it does, it works very well. Um, so that means I don't, I think maybe I should add some bones in here. I'm not sure. So um, yeah, so a little bit of, little bit of room here. Um, a little tight over the hips, but also I haven't cut this uh, I need to add some slashes for the adding in the curve so that's okay I think um, too too much room on like on the hip um, let's draw that bust line and yeah you can see that it, it goes over but obviously it's <laughs> we need some we need some extra room so um so basically it's like something like that roughly 
Um, I don't know if I can get away with just a single goal rather than two. Maybe, maybe that's an option too. So maybe I will draw another line up the middle. I might make that one longer so I know that's the, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the over the apex line. Okay, so yeah, let's, um, let's just do that again. Um, it's not, it's actually not bad. So that's... I think the next step is to put some slashes in the bottom of this curve here to, so it will lift up to where I've actually sewn the line. Uh, where I've sewn the line is slightly higher than the waist, so I might, I might want to just put teeny slashes, a couple of teeny slashes just to release the tension. It's actually not that bad, it's fairly comfortable. Um, I might, I don't know if I'm going to add the slashes for the gauze yet. Uh, I think the other thing I'll do is somehow add, like, add my, add my boning, um, so that it's actually closer to being boned. One option, either, because this is all double laid, so I can just sew some channels and drop these through, or, uh, I have seen, um, on some channels where they've just basically used masking tape on the inside so literally they just tape it and then like have have the bones in uh so it's taped to the corset um so that way you can get an idea without having to put too much work in so that's an that's an option as well um so yeah that's it's progressing fairly well Interesting. So uh, the taping in works quite well. Uh, certainly if the um, bones are on the body, they're all staying there very nicely. Um, so a couple of things. So I've, I've slashed two sorts of gauze in the front. On this side, <laughs> as you can see, uh, there's two, two sets of gauze here. Um, and honestly, I don't I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think I need two, two gauze because they really end, end up being really very small. And I don't think that's working. Uh, on the other side, I tried just slashing a single gore. And I think, honestly, I think that's, um, um, that's, that seems fine. I still have a bra on underneath this, so I, I'll, off camera, I'll do some <laughs> experiments. To see, I'll take that off and, and try on again and see how that goes. Um, I'm I'm all right with that. So I've slashed this to just below, well, basically where my bra would like the bottom part of my bra would sit. Um, and honestly, I think that's uh, that's not that's um it's pretty it's pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth actually. I think maybe I don't know if the back's sitting too high. I think I need to look at some more examples of extant ones because it is it's sitting quite quite tall it's comfortably tall um but it might be it might be too high up uh for this one here i'm happy because i want a slightly more um more coverage i really want that that really strong mid bust line this is quite good actually it's going just above sort of the apex which is about here um so that that's that's pretty good i'm I don't think I will ever wear the corset on its own. There will always be something underneath it, so I don't need to worry about how, really how high or how low it's going particularly. But yeah, some, it's good. One thing I have noticed is uh, I've managed to reintroduce a lot of, it's, I might even wear this, like this, this particular mock-up for a while, um, because I have managed to reintroduce um, a degree of pressure across the ribs which was the reason I didn't like the modern corset that I took apart in a previous video because there was too much pressure here so it's weird that I seem to have managed to bring that back like if I take a deep breath it's like the pressure is here on the actual bottom of the rib cage and nowhere I mean obviously I've slashed this and stuff as well but um, it's not like further up it's there right on sort of where the ribs are on the side so um 
I need to have a think about that. Uh, the ultimate finish of the corset is not necessarily going to be in the single piece that this one is. Um, I really just wanted to start with a single piece because I figured that would be easier for patterning. But I am perfectly, perfectly prepared <laughs> to have um, the final pattern actually be like, like sections. And if I do that, then obviously I can introduce like a little bit of room here. Um, where it's missing uh, and I can actually create maybe just the smallest bit of cupping like around my ribs. The other thing is if I did that then I can probably, I probably can take the waist in a teeny bit. Uh, the other thing would be is I can absolutely take the waist in here if I'm if I'm just taking in at the side on the side profile. I can probably take that in by a centimetre. Um, there is a bit of gap as long as because these bits of ribs here don't seem to get pushed. It's really the ones on front, which is weird. So side profile, fine, honestly, perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Um, also, this amount of uh, ribs, uh, ribs, boning, <laughs> which are ribs, I guess, um, this is fine, actually. Considering this is just two layers of heavy duty calico, I feel very, very, like, I feel supported in this. This feels snug, relatively comfortable. Um, it all seems to be sitting quite well. I'll have to just check the video, but like feeling up and down my back, it feels like the bones are parallel. Um, and of course, um, the fact that this is all not, uh, not fastened at all here at the top, of course means that the top can get tightened further than perhaps what it would be normally as well. So that's another thing. So I'm relatively pleased. Um, I don't know if I want to make another calico mock-up or not. I will finish off uh, the gauze. Oh, I'll finish this one off properly and this one just quickly because I, I think I am just going to go with the single gore. Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I'm quite happy i'm quite happy the i uh, did take in a little bit of the hip gore by basically unpicking it at the back here and pulling it around i still think it's not quite the angles maybe not <sighs> i think it's all right but as you can see it's still it's very it's very loose um maybe maybe the maybe that's good <laughs> i don't i don't know um so the back seems fine now. So if I needed to take this in to get to get this snug over the hips, I think what I need to do is actually change the angle at the front and lift this like inside at the front here, lift that up by, mm, feels like about a centimeter and then re-sew that angle. And even then, even if I do that actually, that's still not really changing like it's still going to not um i think it might just be best to leave them <laughs> honestly um rather than rather than try and really structure them the other option for the hip goals is i could try not padding them but um maybe quilting so sort of padding but like adding structure without sort of like padding it up a lot that might work as well so but i'm relatively pleased with how this is going uh so yeah so the next stage wear this around for a while see what it does to the ribs and then decide where the next pattern comes from if i decide i'm going to chop the whole thing up and turn it into like strips um which i might need to do it because it's gonna it is pulling it will pull weirdly because while it's straight across the grain here by the time it gets around to here the grain is not like directly parallel to the actual seams anymore because it's all been cut in one piece so that is something to think about whether i need to need to do something about that so um and actually to be honest that might be part of the problem with the hips as well because i just cut those out however they fit on the fabric <laughs> without any um any thought as to the grain because i was just trying to use up scraps so that might have something to do with it as well so anyway i'm very happy right uh so 
What I did was I went back to the book. Actually, no, I went back to the website, the v &A website where the detailed pictures of the blue corset are located. And I realized all the stuff that I'd been trying was actually not really relevant to the design of the corset as shown. So what I've done over the last two days, something, I'm not quite sure. So I've sewn up the slits that I put in on either side. Um, so they, remember, I did two on this side and one on this side. So I've sewn that up. And then what I've done is worked out where apex points are. Uh, and then in a much closer fashion to the actual corset design, you can see, I might do this. Okay, so I've boned thoroughly. So there are five bones here. Oh. And by bones, I mean cable ties. Five bones here, and then a gap, and then this is up at an angle, which is what the original corset shows, but my angles are considerably wider. Um, I did a whole heap of measurement on paper, which you probably can't see because I did it in pencil, um, to kind of replicate what it shows in the book. And mostly that wasn't going to work for me. I'm, I'm just because of bust size. Uh, so that's a corset for somebody with a smaller bust than me. So I've changed this angle. So this angle here is about twice as wide as it is shown on the book here. So what you can see here where the bottom <laughs> where the bottom of the gore comes in if you follow that down it comes down to a point so basically these bones are straight and then these ones come out at an angle and then if you look down here these ones on the side come out at an even further an angle and you've got this extra not even sure this is necessarily a gore this is almost just like there's almost no additional volume added here so that's what I've tried to replicate. So as you can see, that's what I've got going on here on the side. So once again, this comes down and it anchors at this point here and then it goes up around the side to just past sort of the center line here. Uh, now on, on the blue corset, there's no further bones on the side. They're only on the back. Uh, and they're on either side of the eyelets and then there's diagonals sort of that start here and then go down to the waist. I haven't bothered to put those on yet because in fact I probably won't in the mock-up because I don't think that's really it's not really required for the mock-up because there's steel bones in around the um, the eyelet uh, the eyelets that I've got going on here but this this feels good excuse me padding um this feels robust it feels it feels comfortable i feel um supported uh i feel not overly compressed like this side is not boned at all which is why i keep standing on this side um i think so certainly one thing I've noticed, I'm, I might need to add a little more at the back. So once I put all this boning in, if I do this, you see that's further over than that by at least, at least a centimeter, even though this is fine down, down the center mark. So it's kind of like removed that much volume from the, the corset basically. Uh, but it feels really nice. So, I think I'm going to go with this. I think, I think I'm going with something very similar to this. What's going to happen is, so you can see there's a bit of, like this is pulling across here. Um, I think I can probably fix that because none of these bones are actually anchored in, like they're, it's all sewn very tightly, but none of it's actually anchored into like anything. So, so it's all kind of slipping down. So that's fine. Uh, I definitely think this should be higher across the front. Basically this, like it has actually ended up at a mid bust <laughs> corset. <laughs> uh, 
uh, which I don't really like that much. So I am gonna sort of take this up higher. So basically where this piece of fabric is sitting is, is pretty much the height. I think the size of this gore is also fine. Um, that feels just okay. I think the length of the gore to here, that feels fine. Profile wise, it looks a little, um, I think it looks okay too. Like if you look on the side, I think that looks, that looks right. Um, these are not trimmed down properly here. So I think the height on the side is okay. The height of the back is hard to tell because because the eyelets I've got actually go up above where the corset would sit. I think it's still fine though, because it's only maybe a centimeter shorter than where it would go. So I think that's okay. The length is right at the back and that's down to the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the, the eyelets. So that's okay. This hip flare is sitting, sitting fine. Um, so that's, that seems okay as well. The other thing I want to do is I actually want to cut this piece into two. So right now this is one complete piece that goes from around the back all the way to the front. What I want to do is actually make that side piece a separate piece because <laughs> I'm standing very carefully here uh, because I want to add a little bit of hip shaping here like I do or waist shaping technically I do want to bring that in more just a bit not much um, and if I have a seam there uh, with or without the bones actually the bones might be optional but if I have a seam there I can just take a teeny bit off um, one thing that I was concerned about before was pressure on the ribs here but fascinatingly this 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 gap that I've got um, where there are no bones actually ends up sitting perfectly across that point. So even though I am laced in about as tight as I would fit in here, it's fine. I'm not getting any compression issues at all on the ribs and it actually feels extremely comfortable. So I think I think I am ready to take this I think I'm ready to take this to like uh, like move it out of mock-up into final possibly wearable mock-up anyway into the purple uh, so the double this is basically a double layer method uh, honestly methodology wise is very similar to the Elizabethan where it's basically put the bone in put the zipper foot on, push it all the way up and like, like sew up beside it. Um, so I'm not like sewing the channels first. I'm actually putting the bone in and then sewing the bone into place. So, um, and that's, that's working well, actually, that's working really well. So yeah, I think I'm really pleased actually. So next step is to redraw up the pattern uh, I need to I need to take the hip pieces and transfer those onto a proper pattern as well uh, like onto an actual paper pattern um, I need to divide the pattern into uh, the front piece and the side piece as well I am really happy I'm very happy actually so uh, let's see how we go from here
well I have a corset and I am very pleased with it actually uh, it took a little while to finish off mainly because I fell sick uh, for a week and a half or so part way through the process but you know that happens to the best of us uh, so there are a few problems this was designed as a wearable mock-up uh, and I can see where I need to make changes for a final corset if I decide I'm going to make that. But I'm genuinely pretty happy, actually. Um, things that worked well, like the, p the pattern, the plan, uh, I am, for, for me and my body, this is great. Um, the general shape is perfect. It really is, now that I've kind of worked off the pictures of the blue corset, I you really can see where the blue corset is sort of, like, they really did take something that was very, I guess, um, Elizabethan and then add some hips to it. <laughs> really, that is kind of all it is, pretty much. Uh, so that is basically what I did. There are some uh, independent pattern maker versions of this corset out there, uh, but they are different to what I've actually ended up with. And for me, this is really, really great. Um, so would I change anything? I would change the back. So what I did was I made sure the back was parallel before Four, I cut the cut out the front sections to put in the gauze for the bust, didn't I? And so the back is completely wrong. Uh, so if you are doing the same thing as what I am doing, do not forget that step. Uh, so I will be going back um, into the pattern basically and redrawing the pattern to take that into account um, Once I've got the rest of the footage for this I'll actually almost measure the difference between what it is at the waist and what it is at the back at the top um, And then cut that out but from feeling uh, sort of at the back that the extra kind of diagonal um, sort of boning they're basically vertical so <laughs> That kind of gives me um, sort of what what's going what's going on there. Uh, what else would I change? I would reduce the height of the back a little bit as well. Right now, it's sitting um, sort of on on the shoulder blades. It's not uncomfortable at all. Um, it's just that sort of the back fat is like spilling over the top, which is not ultimately won't matter particularly because this is designed to be worn under. Uh, a Victorian style shirt which would be loose anyway um, but I think that would be a better idea if I just reduce that probably by I guess about two centimeters then it would actually sit underneath the shoulder blades not on top um, and I think that that all would be slightly better yeah not uncomfortable um, just not not as flattering as it could be there um, the other thing is the back I think this really, uh, the hips, I think that the back should be three, maybe even four centimeters lower and then just sort of curved around. Um, I think that would be a better shape. And the other thing I think I would do is the back bones are inserted into, um, so the way it's, it's, it's almost done like a bag. It's bag lined basically with the, with the lining. So it's all sewed around the back, across the bottom, and then up the front, and then all the bones are so, uh, inserted in and then sewn in that way. I think what I would do is I would have a separate vertical piece for the two, the back bones and the eyelets, rather than have those incorporated into sort of the main body of the corset. I think that would give a slightly better finish, uh, and it would also mean that I wasn't putting, um, that there's not like a whole heap of bulk in the fold where the the hip uh, the hip gore joins into the back right at the middle of the back it's fine uh, it's just a way I think that it would make it the whole thing a little bit tidier um, other stuff that worked really well this whole boning design is great so it's got 
bones up here and then bones diagonally up just past so pretty much leaving uh, a nice neat centered on the apex uh, cups cups gauze over the bust and then angled again so it goes from the same waist up to the underarm which is also quite good the other thing I think I'd do next time, which would be a different to the, uh, I'm pointing at the book, <laughs> which is where the, the blue corset pattern is, rather than having these coming down at the back, I would actually take it from the waist and then take it up instead. Uh, I think that that would be better for my body because what I notice here, there's sort of like a, a weird bowing here. So it comes out a little bit and then cuts back into the waist at the back which is a bit odd and I'm not, I, I think it's doing that as well because the back is not straight. But I think for me, if those back bones were going in the opposite direction, I think that would be better. So uh, that's the plan basically. When I remake this and do it um, a different way, um, I'll do that. Uh, one thing I tried and did not work, um, I tried having a pair of metal bones down the side and then down into the hip gore. Uh, I put those on um, before I sewed in the top base, so before I bound the top, um, and then I basically laced the whole thing on, uh, and that wasn't working for me. Um, just because of the way my lack of <laughs> lack of volume, uh, lack of distance between the bottom of the rib bones and the top of the hip, um, like. By taking those bones out and relacing, it's both made it more comfortable and I've lost at least an inch out of the waist as well. Uh, the independent patterns that I've seen for this corset do have bones down the side like that, uh, but the actual, um, like the, the real corset does not. So if you are making something along these lines, don't, don't feel you need to put those bones in unless you know it's going to work for you. Uh, one thing though that may that may have an impact on is that means that I'm relying on my natural hips of which they are generously endowed so it shouldn't be a problem to support any uh, skirts and uh, petticoats uh, where if I had some boning in over the hips they would help support it uh, because there were crinolines in the 16 no 18 for, 1860s uh, when the original design of course it were around and so you didn't necessarily need uh, boning in the hip because the crinoline was taking care of that so I think what I'll be doing um, as I move, I'll move on to the next bit with the petticoats is I will evaluate whether I do in fact need to make some hip padding uh, that I can tie around uh, the waist that that would probably take care of it uh, but you know I think I think I have a I have sufficient hip spring, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I think, I think it's, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. But finally, uh, I finally. Do you know this is, this is my, oh, I guess only the sec, third course that I've ever attempted to make, uh, and the first one from no, from no, no pattern, and it worked. It worked. Uh, I made a thing and the thing is good. Uh, so I am extremely pleased. So um, yeah, if you have any questions any about the about exactly how I made this, if it's not clear from the video, feel free to ask. Um, the Elizabethan corset is uh, elizabethanclothing.net I think is the website. That's where I made the initial Elizabethan style one that this is sort of based off. So try that out maybe. Um, but I am absolutely delighted with the results. So uh, I'm not going to make another one for a while. I have other things to sew. But when I get around to it, I should be able to make something really very fantastic so uh thank you very much for watching uh have you been doing anything tricky let me know in the comments below please do follow me here on youtube if you have not and over on instagram thank you and i will talk to you next time bye